This demonstration we're going to look at how we can create and manage mailbox databases in Exchange Server 2016. So I've come to my Exchange Admin Center. Within my Exchange Admin Center, I'm going to come down to the Servers node. Then within the Servers node, what we're going to do here is we're then going to go to Databases. So we'll highlight Databases. Next thing to do is to actually create a new database. And in order to do that, we click on our plus button. So we'll select our plus button, create a new database. That will then bring us into wizard, and within the wizard, we then need to start filling out the wizard in order to create the mailbox database. So what we're going to do at this point here is I'm just going to call my database um, DB2. Then what we need to do is specify which server this is going to live on. So we'll click our browse button. And what we're going to do is we're just going to stick it on Lonnie X1. And select OK. Then it's going to ask us where we're going to put the database files and where we're going to put the log file. So what we'll do here is we'll just modify these locations to some iSCSI targets we created in an earlier demo. So what I'm going to do, database file path would be e colon backslash db2 backslash db2.edb and then for the log files f colon backslash logs backslash db2. I will mount the database as well and we'll select save. Just got a little pop-up telling me to restart the Microsoft Exchange Information Store, so we'll just select OK. And now what we've got is we've got DB2. Now that we've created DB2, what we can do is we can now manage DB2, and we can do that through the Exchange Admin Center, or we could do that through the Exchange Management Shell as well. So we'll just highlight the database, we'll click the Edit button. That then brings us into the properties of DB2. It's not really a lot that we need to modify, or that we, we will modify. So just on the general page, general information, so the database is called DB2, we can see the file location, we can see it's mounted, see the type, see which server is hosting the database on the maintenance tab. What we got here is we could specify journal recipients, so any emails sent through this database could then be logged by the journal recipients, we can specify that by clicking browse. Specify our maintenance schedule, so currently what we're doing here is we're running from 1 through to 5. Also as well, down at the bottom here, we can enable background database maintenance. We can say don't mount this database at start of. Maybe we don't want to run it, we only run it maybe once a month. Maybe this database is being used purely for a month-end process. Database can be overwritten by restore, self-explanatory. Database can be overwritten by restore. And enable circular logging just reutilizes log files. And that makes sure that our log file location has a very limited number of log files sitting there. However, in a recoverability situation, we don't really want to use circular logging. Limits node. So on the limits node here, we're going to issue a warning at 1.9 gigabyte. We're going to prohibit send at 2 gigabyte. Remember, you have a sent items folder that still takes up space. We'll prohibit send and receive at 2.3 gigabyte. We'll keep all deleted items for 14 days so the users can recover deleted items. And we'll keep the deleted mailbox for 30 days. In the case of the warning message interval, this is when we'll generate the warning message based off these warnings above. Under client settings, what we have under client settings is we can specify the offline address book for users of this mailbox database. So like I said, there's not really a lot to set there. So we'll just select cancel. Haven't really modified anything. We can also modify all of this as well through Exchange Management Shell. So if we just go to Exchange Management Shell, we'll just clear off the screen. And what we'll do here is we'll just issue some command. So what we're going to do here is we're going to specify for DB2 that deleted item retention should be 20 days. We'll enable circular logging. And what we'll also do as well is we'll change that prohibit send to be 2.2 gigabyte. And to do that, we're going to use the set hyphen mailbox database, hyphen identity DB2, hyphen deleted item retention, 20 days. Circular logging is enabled, dollar true, and prohibit send quarter at 2.2 gigabyte. So as it also states here as well, we're not going to be able to apply these changes until we dismount and remount the database. So what we'll do here, we'll just clear off the screen. We'll just issue the command to dismount the database. And we'll do that by issuing dismount hyphen database hyphen identity db2. Now we'll do at this point here, default is Y, but we'll hit Y anyway just to dismount it. Hit enter. And then we'll remount the database. And we'll do that by using the mount database. So we'll just up arrow this a couple of times. Scroll this back a little bit. And then we'll just get rid of the disk bit. Hit the enter key. And that allows us to then remount the database. So the database is remounted. Let's just see if that has worked. So we'll just come back to our Exchange Admin Center. And within our Exchange Admin Center, we'll just edit the settings on DB2. 
we'll just look at maintenance to start with. So circuit logging is indeed enabled. And then we look at limits. Now oh, within limits, let's have a look here. Yep, what we've got here under limits, we have actually got, yep, prohibit send 2.2 gig. The other thing we said as well is if we go back to maintenance again, so I'm just scroll this down, yep, so everything is definitely set. And then just under our client settings, we didn't modify any of this, so no settings in place here. Back to limits finally again, and deleted item retention is indeed 20 days. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.